Hey guys, it's Nolan from Four Player Podcast. I'm here with Chris Hecker of Spy Party, uh, my game I just played at PAX. Uh, so the game you were just in the finals. Of. I was in the finals for the uh, tournament, and I unfortunately lost. So, uh, what do you think about the reaction that you got from the game here at PAX? Oh, I've been. I mean, I had no like. I, this is the first time I've ever done a booth, so yeah. like it's so much work preparing for a booth that I just basically like told myself not to have any expectations. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think my game is cool, and it, you know, but like I just I didn't know like we we're gonna have a line, no line, like empty booth. I have to like go grab people off the thing. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's been awesome. We've had a line since. Yeah, I mean, we I mean, came by several times. There's always a line. Yeah. What's great is the line was like. Um, you know, the, the lines for, like, the bigger games are, like, based on marketing, right? Like, you yeah. know, it's like, I know the name Duke Nukem Forever, that's cool. But, like, we didn't have a line the first day, mm-hmm. and then it got a little longer, and then a little longer, and it was yeah. word-of-mouth-based. People oh, were like, yeah, oh, i got to go check out this game. So that's the word-of-mouth is the best possible thing to have, and yeah. so, like, it's been great. Like, Twitter, and uh, it's just awesome. Yeah. So I'm so, I'm floored. And the tournament, I mean, I was more interested in fewer people playing the game deeper because the game is all about depth. It's not actually a very good like convention game because yeah. you, you really, I mean, you know now, yes. now you're the, one of the expert players. Like It changes totally as you go. Your first game, you're like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. You know, But then it's like, oh, I'm picking up on the... And what's really interesting is like you can, as an expert player, mm-hmm. you can watch someone else playing Sniper and you're like, oh, yep, I know who it is. Exactly. And so you guys were all practicing yes. the whole time. Yeah. And so like I wanted people to see that level of depth because I want to take it there and even farther, like eSports level depth. But where the player skill stuff is about, uh, you know, behavioral perception and, you know, deception, not like map navigation and shooting, which yeah. is the normal player skill stuff, which I love. You know, Counter-Strike is one of my favorite games, and Counter-Strike's a big inspiration for this game because it's just so deep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like the, the level's there. And so I want to do that, but for a game that's not about shooting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so that's one of the things I want to talk about. Obviously, this is not the final build of the game. It's oh, far from it. I mean, it's it. two years away at least. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the, the, one of the things that yeah, I know when I was playing that would give it away big time is if maybe a player kind of made a, a little kind of mistake. Maybe they stumbled right. a little bit. Yeah. Is that gonna, something that come, comes into play with the AI? Like, maybe will the AI make yeah, a mistake? Yeah, it actually or? does stutter a little bit. Oh, really? I, but yeah, the AI will adjust occasionally, uh-huh. uh, which is sometimes why you see people getting shot. Yeah, like they, they like the wrong pick, person. So what I want to do, so right now, there's, so there's different levels of like things of, uh, of things that can give you away, like tells, right? Yeah. Um, just raw movement is one of them, mm-hmm. right? You have to learn, but it's actually not hard. People after a few games pick up how to move like the AI. Yeah. The pro- problem people actually have is because they're used to playing games, normal games, where you just ma- you know map navigate. You're like walking around. I'll go over there. I'll go over here. I'll adjust if I'm not quite right. Mm-hmm. Here, you have to like make a plan and yeah. stick with it. It's like I'm going to go to that conversation circle over there, and I have to just go with authority. Yeah. And if I don't hit it exactly right, I have to play it cool. Yeah. Right. If you adjust, then you're dead. Right. Exactly. As you know. Yeah. And so. Um, uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Punctuating my point. Exactly. Um, but so, uh, um, so the, the 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 actual navigation, while it's easy to screw up, it becomes a player skill component, right? It, yeah. it makes it so that, like, yes, you have to move correctly, but it's not hard to learn. So it's, it adds some more depth, right? It's like it's, original builds of the game really long time ago had click to move, mm-hmm. and in fact, the mouse version still has click to move, and it's less compelling. Oh yeah. Because. When, once that player skill aspect of navigating is taken out, like it just loses a little bit of that expressivity. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, it becomes uh, part. You know, like when you're playing a shooter, mm-hmm. you don't think about I'm going to strafe now. You think I want to go over there. Yeah. Right. And so it ha- that happens with this game too. After a few plays, right? At first you're like, Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm bouncing into walls. But eventually you're like, Oh, I just want to go over there. Yeah. And but new, but I, the, the, the biggest piece of advice I give to newbie sm- spies after watching them play here, this is the most. This is the most number of noobs who have played the game, right? Because yeah. it's just a fresh person every two games. Exactly. Whereas we've done, done mostly depth-based playtesting, like the same people for 20 hours, right? So it's really good to see, you know, what... But the piece of advice I give people is not, like, move a certain way. It's camera management, decide where you're going to go, and, and then, then go. Yeah. Don't walk into the middle of the room not knowing. A lot of people start out, they try and aim the camera Tomb Raider style. Like, I want the camera behind me. Yeah. You know, like, no, if you're in the corner, you want the camera the other way so you can see where the laser is and that yeah. kind of thing. And uh, people will walk into the camera and I'm just like, ah, what are you doing? Because you can't see where you're going. Exactly. Right? So uh, so it's all about that, like, kind of, it's just a very different way of acting. But I think that, I think that navigation aspect does add depth to it. Yeah.
Um, like you were saying with the skill-based play, like right now I'm pretty sure if I played against anybody who's never played it before, oh, so, they I mean, would lose. Would, 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 so would, how are you going to account for that when the game comes out? Right, like, right. So, so I mean, I'm going to have a massive handicapping system. There's so many knobs for handicapping. Mm -hmm. um, like the subsetting missions, I don't know if you know, you saw yeah. the final round. We let them subset. Because what happens is the, uh, the sniper has an advantage. At your skill level now, you're just getting to the point where the sniper has the advantage if you have to do all four missions. Because if you know they're going to do four missions, I mean, there's going to be 20 missions in the event final thing, but you know, you're pretty, so if you know that they're going to do four missions, mm -hmm. then you know what they are. Are, yeah. You can camp one of them, right? Exactly. Even if you're not like on it the whole time, you can just keep it in the back keep of your mind. And so, which is one of the things I did. But right, it just becomes too hard. So what happened was that we determined we were keeping track of who was winning, you know, or what side side was winning. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And the whole semifinal, and the, the, it, it was even up into, for the elimination. And then we got to the semifinals. It snipered all the way to the end. Exactly. And so then the last two games, we said, all right, you're going to start subsetting. So we let them pick three out of four. Yeah. And it, that rebalances it. So, so if someone tried to camp one thing, they might yeah, They might, they might the lose. One that, because, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So now it's a risk management thing, right? Mm -hmm. And attention as a resource, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the themes of the sniper side. It's like your attention as a resource. You're like, I really want to watch that guy longer, but I, I can't afford to not be looking somewhere else, yeah. right? Um, so I'm sure you felt, right? You're like, I, uh. Um, so, uh, so there's just a lot of knobs in the game for tuning the uh, handicapping. So what I want to do is I'm basically turning the player skill depth aspect to 11 right now so that, yes, you should be able to kill all comers, yeah. right? And I could kill you every time, right? Probably. But, um, not probably. Okay. okay? <laughs> all right. But... Uh, then, once I've got that and I can increase that extremely, yeah. then I'll tune it back with gadgets and all kinds of different stuff to like make it to retune it. Oh, okay, right? so like so the, spy, the spy's gonna have some gadgets? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of gadgets on both sides, like an infrared camera and like you know, all kinds of stuff. But I can do that for handicapping rounds when a matchmaker matches two people who are way different rated. Yeah. Like, are you familiar with Go, the Japanese yeah. the, the yeah. Asian board game? It's the most beautiful game ever designed. Yeah. And it's got this amazing handicapping system where I can play some, I'm okay at Go. I mean, well, I'm crap at Go. Okay. But to a normal person who's never played, I, I can, you know, but I can play a, a, a good, a really good player and still have a great game mm -hmm. because their handicapping system is so perfectly tuned. Yeah. So we can both have a great game. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, it's a fantasy that I'll get something as good as Go, but that's the, like, <laughs> goal there. It's like something that, because the problem with games, like, I mean, you get a really deep game like Counter-Strike, mm -hmm. like Counter-Strike for noobs is no fun. You walk in, boom, you're dead, boom, you're dead, boom, you're dead, you yeah. know? And so... I want to. I have enough knobs, and I'm hoping I can get it handicapped so that I can have a pretty big envelope of disparity. Because like once you do matchmaking, if you've got, if your game is really player skill and your matchmaking, and you can't handicap, mm -hmm. like you can't ever find anybody to play, mm -hmm. right? Because you gotta have something right at your skill level. You're just screwed. Yeah. So if you can handicap games above and below, you get a really wide envelope. Mm -hmm. So that'll be great. I mean, hopefully. I haven't. I, don't, I haven't designed any of that yet. Yeah. We'll see what happens. That's why there's more than it's two years. Yeah. So this obviously isn't the desired look. Do you have any ideas from like you know yeah, characters? This is, this is very ugly. Yeah. These are just placeholders uh, for the characters yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, items. Yeah. I mean, what I like want to do in the long run is uh, uh, for advanced players. Well, I want so I want to do something that's totally insane, which is I want to have custom animations and Fox for every character. Really? Okay? So, like, you're going to have all the, like, spy and mystery movie tropes, right? You know, the ingenue and Miss Marple, the old dowager lady, and the, like, mad scientist in the wheelchair, and all the usual suspects, right? Uh -huh. And they'll all have custom animations and custom things they do. So, like, the general, you know, from the Banana Republic will, like, chase skirts and drink too much, okay? Uh -huh. And if you're not doing that while you're playing the game, you're going to get shot by someone who knows that that's what you do. Uh, now, for okay. game players, it'll be more like this, where... You know, uh, there'll just be a single AI running on all the NPCs, but for uh -huh. advanced players, you'll turn up the like custom, you know, character based yeah. AI, and then you have to act like the, you know, like the the, uh, the mad scientist will alienate everyone, and they won't want to be in a conversation with him, yeah. you know, because he's a freak, right? Like, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, you'll be able to pick to be the waiter, uh -huh. for example, oh, okay. which makes some missions hard and some missions easy, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, things like that. So, I got a ton of plans that way. Style-wise, I haven't picked the aesthetic yet. I want to get the game design really awesome first but um but i'm assuming some kind of timeless design like if you look at a movie like the incredibles mm -hmm. it's like what time period does the incredibles take place in it's like no idea yeah it's kind of 60s but not so 60s that it's alienating and it's like you know so like that's a really tf2 actually manages to hit that too you i know? agree it's like that really timeless but i mean the art direction of the incredibles is just incredible yeah and so something like that is what i'm assuming right now uh -huh. we'll see how it goes i mean I, it's a long way away i, I, I got time i want to make sure that the art direction is consonant with the gameplay yeah uh one last question um the only other game i can think that's kind of similar to this in which you were trying to discreetly perform a task would right. be like something like hitman almost right well so there was a mission in hitman where you were a waiter yes but you really didn't no, no one looked to see whether you were doing a good job as a waiter. Yeah. So they didn't hook the feedback loop back 
jump, right? Which is what this game does. So yeah. there's a bunch of other games that people often compare it to. So like, um, there's a game called The Ship, which was on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is in the other hall, has a yeah. multiplayer mode, which is like that. Basically, have you heard of the college campus game Assassin? Yes. Yeah, so it's like, I, get, I have a hat full of names. I pick a name, that's my target. Somebody else picks my name. It's, it's a big it's, circle. Right. That's a totally symmetric game, though. I'm simultaneously hunter and hunted. Yes. Which is a cool game. Like, no, don't, don't get wrong. But here, I totally asymmetricized it because the spy is only hunted. Yeah. And the sniper doesn't have to worry about their back, right? Yeah. The sniper is just can calm down and concentrate on the behavior perception. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is coming out with that. And, uh, but, like, they've done stuff. Like, they've done a bunch of stuff that, like, I wish they hadn't have done. Like, I played it in E3, and, like, there's a radar. Like, all of a sudden, like, if there's a radar that, who cares that, about behavior, exactly. you're right chasing people around. Uh, that's, like, that was my part Take the radar it. out. Like, yeah. come on. And, uh, um... So yeah, so so it's different in, in, in that way. The, um, uh, what was the game you mentioned? Uh, the, Hitman. The, the Hitman. Yeah. So Hitman never hooked it back up. Like there's yeah. no reason to perform. Yeah. Right. On the sniper side, there you are highly incented to perform. Uh -huh. Right. So it's performative on the sniper side and perceptive on the or performative on the spy side and perceptive on the sniper side. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have to do those things or you're just gonna lose. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. This is probably my game of the show. Awesome. Thanks thank, a lot. Thank you very much.